How do you have top five, dude? You know how much hate mail you're gonna get in the comments below? <laughs> how could you have forgotten? Welcome back to As Art with Nick and John. Today we got legendary guitarist oh. with us, Brett Papa, yes. known as Papa Stash on YouTube. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> Just so you know, he teaches amazing rock lessons. He does blues, the pentatonic scale. <laughs> did I get that right? All my business. You did. That was oh, great. Major Minors. pentatonic, minor pentatonic. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and Rhythm, he has an awesome stuff. session guitarist. He lives in Nashville with some yeah. of the shredding. I, when I'm in Nashville, I don't even Lord. say I play guitar. I'm Woo. like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. These guys <laughs> shred, 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 and he has Pete legends like Tim Pierce oh, and other session guitarists that just shred and have yeah. such a great hi history in the oh. music industry. Woo! All right, so let's go into our top five rock guitarists. How do you have top five, dude? I don't know. I just thought we'll have a lot of honorable <laughs> I mentions because I don't even want to put a list. You know of how much hate together. mail you're gonna get in the comments below? <laughs> how could you have forgotten? Please let us know if you disagree with us. Uh, uh, we really want to hear why. Yeah. And maybe we'll do another one after your opinions because. Yeah. We're gonna go over stuff that I mentioned. I'm thinking of now that I can't believe oh, we put God. on the list. No, I know, right? <laughs> so, that? like, we thought of five, and in my mind, I'm just like, I know, keep going I know. Down. I'm like, wait about, wait, oh, what about, man. what about, what about? Dang it! Like, yeah. I just thought of Pink Floyd. Oh, bro, dude, David Gilmour, are you kidding? I me? know, I feel terrible. Yeah. No. You should feel terrible. You didn't mention him. No, I did. I did before, but you said five, and we were running out. I'm like, well. but there's so many. So if you if you have hate mail directed to Brett's, you know, he's yeah, Brett. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> oh my gosh! But please let us know. It's all about style and choice too. Yeah. And also, we're looking at maybe even the impact what they had on music sure. too and just and, and also maybe maybe they're not so upfront. Maybe they are and we gotta mm -hmm. give them the respect that they earned and deserve. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. all right, I'm gonna well with David Gilmore, awesome. We already talked about him. We have Slash. Uh, sorry Slash you didn't not make the top five. I still love you. I still he love you man. He's so man. amazing. He's <laughs> oh my gosh. You and, know I will say this. Maybe he is not worthy of the top five. But as far as somebody who's stuck around as a guitar icon, he really, Outlived, he just definitely I mean, deserves a, a place somewhere in there. Yeah. He's a great, I mean, dude, I saw him not that long ago and he was just freaking on fire. He's still, I was just like, he's still rocking. Man. I'd never seen Guns N' Roses and it was like, uh, they, um, so it was kind of a random story. One of the guys, this is one of my students, they work with HBO. And so they, they built that arena. Mm -hmm. I forget what it's called in Vegas. So it's killer freaking yeah. brand new. T-Mobile Arena, I oh, think is what it is, right? Is it the new Raider Stadium? I don't, okay. no, no, it's not okay. that, not okay. quite that big. But but anyway, so the guy who does the sports division is like, hey man, I got two tickets to the opening night of Guns N' Roses, you wanna go? And we're like, dude, <laughs> yeah. you wanna go, right? <laughs> yeah, and sure. so we show up and like, it's like killer room with like sushi and it was like. Did you but, go around with like VIP Dude, I was houses? just like, bro, John Mayer was in the room next door. I was just like, what? come on, like, right? But anyways, I'd never seen him play, and I was like, okay, I was a little nervous because you know not everybody's young anymore, right? <laughs> and um, they freaking just ripped the cover off. I was just, I was like beyond my expectations. I was like, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. That was freaking Dude. insane. Dude, welcome to Paradise yeah. City. Welcome to the jungle. <laughs> oh no, yeah, what am I saying? <laughs> welcome to Paradise City. Oh no. Hey, they got, hey, they got a Paradise City too. Oh, uh, I know. That's why I mixed it up. All right, one of my favorites, and I. I, it's always been one of my favorites. I'm such a big fan of him. Alex Lifeson. Yo, Rush. he's Dude. good, man. I, you know, and what's so cool about that band, uh, Neil Peart, man. Yeah, bless he his just heart. Lost him. All his vital organs. Gosh, he was amazing. We yeah. love Neil Peart. And maybe we'll do a drummer list and we can just talk about Neil Peart and how amazing <laughs> he is and how he really changed Rush. Oh, I mean, dude, totally. he, I mean, he even wrote so many lyrics for. Oh Rush yeah, too, I was gonna so. say his lyrics. Is I mean, like, and that he came in on the second album, right? Yeah. Fly by night. I, I don't think, know what I, I'm not. They had a that different dude, album, but, but um, Alex, it was just like you talk about like the perfect members coming together. Yeah, it sounded like there were six guys in the band. Well, dude, they played with their freaking feet too. It's like, right. okay, you're really great at playing guitar, and then you're gonna play keyboards with their freaking feet. And then they're surrounded by drum sets <laughs> totally. and everything. It's just like incredible band. Yeah. So Alex Lifeson, I think, Be one of the deaf best live bands ever hands down like, oh yeah they're so I'm hard to beat so like, fortunate i've seen yeah. them like 20 times really <laughs> yeah. i love that band it was a band i've watched the most live mm -hmm. I, I was a big 
What about you? Band. Come on, give us a guitar player. I'm ready. Uh, probably one of my favorites. As Nick, Nick always makes fun of me. I'm always listening to him all the time. But uh, as far as a writer and you know songwriter and everything, uh, probably Billy Corgan, Smashing Pumpkins. Oh, dude, he's freaking great. And he's he's just he's been around so too. long too. I mean, yeah. if you look at all the songs, it's funny. He always writes the most bizarre song titles, yeah. so you couldn't name. Him, but he has so many songs to his yeah. credit, and just. And they, it's, they're kind of like Zeppelin where they have the light and shade, you know, they have, he has the really heavy stuff and he has yeah. the really kind of almost folk or lyric, you know, kind of yeah. lighter stuff. So kind of the light and shade. So he's kind of been one of my favorites over a lot of years. I remember like that, uh, smashing the, uh, what's the, um, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. What was that album called? Siamese Dream. Mm -hmm. I remember when Siamese yeah. Dream came out and then it was like, they were so big. And then that, what was the, the melancholy or whatever, the double album yeah, came out. And they were like sounds, the yeah. biggest band in the world in the nineties. It was the craziest. So I, I went to their, they, they did this reunion tour just yeah. last year. Yeah. And uh, you know, they, they're kind of like Zeppelin where they do all their live performances tend to be way different than their studio albums. Sure. And for this, for this reunion tour, they did, I think it was three to four hours of all their best from their first four albums. Mm -hmm. And they would do it like the studio albums. So you actually yeah. got it close to, and it was so crazy. And so it's three out of the main four band members. Right. And, but it was just crazy getting to see it live. I was like, wow. You know, like, cause mo most of my favorite guitarists are bands. Bands, they're yeah. either disbanded or dead, you know, like one yeah, of the two. Right. Yeah. So getting to see him, I caught the very last Rage Against Machine concert they've ever done. No way. Tour. Yeah, I got to see it at the Coliseum. Yeah. You know, I mean, oh speakers from God. the ground what to the ceiling. I was like, chaos. what a place to see them. Oh, dude. Oh, I mean, man. that is like the most epic place you could end that. Yeah. Other than Mexico, you know. <laughs> we barely didn't see uh, uh, the Smash of Cummins there, but my buddy and I went to San Diego. It was at like San Diego State. Still sounded great. But yeah. so Billy Corgan, as far as a uh, favorite guitarist, he's, wow. he's up there for me in that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. All right, Brett, you're the man. Oh, what I'm, I'm, the biggest, I'm the biggest Van Halen nut that's ever lived. So I All right. So are we going to go into the top then? Are we, yeah. Are we, what are some more? Are these honorable, honorable mentions? mentions? Uh, oh, I thought, you know, oh, sorry. Uh, that was my would, top five. Sorry that. I would definitely say um, <laughs> Keith Richards, too. Oh, yeah, Keith so, Richards. And even The Edge, right? There are all these players that, you know, we think of rock guitar players being these, like, really incredible, you know, lead players, too. But those guys, rhythm-wise, mm. like that, and, and they write, write the songs, right? So we don't know of any of these amazing guitar bands without a great song, right? And so those guys, maybe they, they didn't have the chops, but they're... Ability to write a tune and play killer rhythm and stuff is amazing. So. Mike Michael Shanker UFO, <laughs> another one of my favorites. Guy's oh a beast. man, yeah. Woo, did you hear him play? Angus yeah. Young, wow. ACDC. Uh, well, okay, so yeah. performance-wise, he's tough to beat. Like as I mean, far as a complete freaking animal. <laughs> I mean, just like, for him start dancing on the stage the whole yeah. time. It's one thing to be good at, at a musical instrument, but like when you're at that level to command the attention of eighty thousand people, or that yeah. that the place was like a hundred thousand at least. Gosh. And it's like that's a but that's an art in itself, you know. And just DC keep the energy DC level up, you know. Oh man, those power chords. Oh, too. dude. What what was uh, the the dude's name? Mal Malcolm. Malcolm. Yeah. yeah the, the Again, rhythm what, guitar. Rhythm right? guitar. Yeah. Play that uh, concert, and they're in like uh, I don't know someplace in like South America, and oh it is God. insane. It's like inside of it, and he's not young, you know. He's like in his fifties. <laughs> he's bulbing. Yeah, he's just killing going for it, it still, he's and you're just like, it. you realize like. It's one thing to be good at, at a musical instrument, but like when you're at that level to command the attention of 80,000 people or that, yeah. that the place was like 100,000 at least. Gosh. And it's like, that's a but that's an art in itself, you know? And it's, just it's, keep the energy level up, you know? Oh man, those power chords. Oh too. dude. What what was uh, the the dude's name? Mal Malcolm? Malcolm, yeah. yeah the, the Again, rhythm one guitar. Of, rhythm right? guitar. Yeah. Cool. And one uh, of the funny things too is like you were saying how, how Angus could do it as he's getting older, the funniest thing my buddy and I noticed when we were at that Smashing Pumpkins concert is we, he's kind of a quiet guy, bigger guy, but a quiet guy. And we sat down and, you know, you see the early concerts, like some, some venue owner posted the very first concert, like public concert Smashing Pumpkins did. And wow. this is like, you know, hardcore grunger, just crowds yeah. going crazy. Yeah. And then we sat down, you know, and we're, yeah. everybody's in their late thirties, you know, maybe someone's kids. Yeah. And I, we, we didn't say anything to each other for about 15 minutes. We just looked around and all of a sudden I said, Dude, everybody's really old. And he started laughing. He's like, I've been thinking the same thing. We just laughed yeah, so hard right. just for 15 that's minutes true, without any words. I mean, that's, there's a big, I mean, you're starting to get on that yeah. upper edge of the age bracket, you know? 
So, People can be in their mid forties and fifties. Yeah. When you still see them rocking that hard, I doing know. that, yeah. amazing though. You're just like, wow, they've still got it. You know, whether they yeah. look the part as you know as much yeah. more, you're like, wow, they're still rocking. Yeah, no, they're great. Dude, that yeah, just brings he's... up a story. My first concert when I was like twelve, my dad took me to was Scorpions. Oh, dude. Come Wait, how do we on. not think of Scorpions, man? Yeah. Well, again, you can have fifty <laughs> honorable mentions, right? <laughs> um, dude. I just on my way to from when I moved from here to Nashville, I bought. Um, Two Scorpions albums. So I bought the, um, there's one that's like. Blackout? There's one where it's live and there's California somewhere. Oh, it's yeah. It's like mm-hmm. just at the freaking all the oh, great songs. Okay. Yeah. And uh, oh, another band live. You're just like, these freaking dudes just killed it. Like, you know, like, and it's the same thing. They're running around like the, the show and the musicianship is just crazy. Randy Rhodes. I'm a huge Ozzy fan. I'm, Randy's up there. Some of those riffs, man. Yeah, just iconic. Get the tribute album. A lot of people get like Blizzard of Oz and Diary of Memory, mm-hmm. which are mm-hmm. fantastic albums. But the tribute album is live, and you really get to hear Ooh. as a as a band how good they were. You know, they were really I mean, amazing. We're kind of going to older rock, but like we also have like Black Sabbath too. Yeah. Or wow, it? Tony. Yeah. The biggest. Rare. I mean, there would be no Metallica without Tony Iommi. I mean, oh Metallica. Oh rock. my gosh, gosh yeah. just, all these bands are just going down the rack. But, yeah. but anyway, <laughs> so I used to make guitar amps, and one of um, one of the guys that came in was the a producer. His name's Bob Rock, and so he's done like a lot of the Metallica records. He did the Black record and the whole bit. Uh-huh. And so he would come in, and we'd go have lunch with him, and he he would tell us stories. But he, he would talk about James Hetfield because you know if you don't play guitar, um, you know you may not realize, but like. There's downstrokes and upstrokes, right? So, like, you know, when you strum, you can, like, kind of just, you know, flail and, and it'll sound okay, right? But he plays really fast and really, really tight, right? And so Down, a lot of players, yeah, they're all downstrokes, which is gnarly because, like, A, you, you got to think he's singing, yeah. right? And he's playing live or whatever, even even the album. But, like, so think me, I'll learn the Metallica says, and my forearm is just burning <laughs> at the time. <laughs> I can't even do that. Like, <laughs> If I had to do all downstrokes, yeah, even Marty. Marty was just working up one of his tunes, and uh, what tune was it? Master of Puppets, one of those songs. And like, we were both saying, it's such a trip because his right hand is so good, you know. Um, Dude, he must have like Popeye form. No, dude, for sure, (laughs) for sure. Okay, so wait, we cut off Van Halen. We got so let's let's go to like our top. Top Wait, five. Wait, uh, that is oh. top five. Come on now. <laughs> oh, 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 you were going to no, go. You were going to go back. I got it so excited. I'm like, I Wait, know. just let me talk about Van Halen. Okay. Um, you know what? There's probably many more. We have the Eagles. Hendrix. Wait, what, are we going to do top five? Oh, oh yeah. So I'm just going to go over a couple like, you know. Joe Walsh and Joe, Don Felder. Joe Walsh, for Eagles. Sure. I mean, there's some. We have the Doobie Brothers. 19. Uh, Crosby, still national. Over here now. and over here. I'm going to point at both yeah. y'all. Um, 1974, I think. Look up Eagles Live Hotel California. Mm, it's oof. freaking ridiculously good. Like, wow, five part harmonies and the so I mean, they're so yeah. good. A massive band too. Oh, dude! Every person in the band is incredible. Yeah, yeah. and we also have Crosby. Nash, oh, yeah. And, Young, and then we also have. Um, oh, I well, was, I mean, there's Neil Young. There's all those. Neil Young. You know, he's all not those guys. A great writer. I mean, the the Almond Brothers. To, um, I mean, just, the bands go. I, what happened to all the great guitarists in the world? <laughs> There's so many. Well, dude, and then you and then you the start talking about like Grateful eight. Dead. I mean, yeah. just like it. The list just goes on. Well, and, and on. by era, there's so many. I mean, there's the Creams, and there's all those, you know, there's all those bands. But like, oh, it, Eric, Eric Clapton. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Eric Clapton. Yeah. Oh my goodness. He's crazy. one of the Immortals, right? He's way up there. Oh man. Okay, now to our top yeah. five. And poor Clapton's <laughs> not on it. This oh, is a my God. top five, well, non-top so five. We have so many. Fives, we just right? like, out. how do you? We we literally just started this thing and we just went for it. Yeah. So <laughs> we did not do research. We did not go on the internet. We just having a conversations like friends do. Yeah. So. I don't even know if this is the true top five list now. Well, give me your top guitars. five. You say top five. Oh, well, I kind of... I... I know you said life. All right, so here's here's my top yeah. five. Okay. This will be easier because then, then we can get a lot of guitar players yeah. in one thing. Yeah. All right, uh, go. Why don't you should I go? go? Should I go five up? Uh, or no, just, just my top five Number five to one. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I'm on the spot. So, that's, you know, I'm just going to name my, my top okay. five. I, I love Alex Life because yeah. I'm a huge Rush fan. Yeah. And I just love the way he right. plays the guitar. Yeah. All right, one of my all-time favorites, Van Halen, man. Oh. Eddie Van Halen, dude. How oh, do you man. not have mentioned guitars? Wow. The finger tapping right, and everything. everything. And then, of course, Jimmy Page, yeah. Led Zeppelin. Oh, my gosh. I mean... 
yeah. all the way to violin. <laughs> just like everything, you know, just so many iconic shreds and yeah. just moments. Yeah. Uh, I would actually put, if it was my list, I would put Michael Shanker on there because my yeah. favorite live album of all time is UFO Strangers oh, in the Night. That's a great album. I think he's like 16 or something yeah, he's too. Just, yeah, and, super and young. his brother was Rudolph Shanker from mm-hmm. Scorpion. Yeah, Scorpion. And he was the younger brother and he wanted his brother to teach him how to play. He said no, so he just played by ear. Whenever his brother was away, he just learned, he taught himself how to play yeah. guitar. And it's like, what? No, I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> it's so talented. Um, I don't, lost count of how many people I said, but uh, Jimi <laughs> Hendrix will be on there. Yeah. And then. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. I don't remember. But yeah, yeah those are, there. That's, those are, that's about five. That's, that's about five. five. Dang it. You go. Okay. Uh, Let's miss yours. Yeah, I'll, I'll maybe throw out four or five. But so when I think of my, my favorite bands, I think of the, the guitarists too. So Jimmy Page is obviously yeah. on there from Led Zeppelin. Sure. Then uh, Tom Morello from Rage Against Machine. Oh. Definitely mm. different different yeah, type yeah. of rock, but definitely amazing. Another rhythm freaking well, Again, I was really job. glad I got to catch Dude. your last concert. I guess we're supposed to do a couple more in the Dang, next yeah. coming, coming year or two. They but... not like each other. It's the fun. No. One of our buddies not. was used to kind of work with them or whatever. And he was just like, they can all be at like a... A table and like you tell him and he's like you guys he's right there like why don't you just talk, <laughs> to, talk to each other it's that bad uh, like yeah, that. totally that's but that's not an uncommon story in the music business it's i mean yeah, no, the eagles like, oh bro the eagles had the a most, major fight when hell when hell freezes over right that was like the name of the tour right because they said that is the food. most uncomfortable situation i've ever been in my life so i dropped amps off to the eagles because we used to make uh, amps for joe walsh and I literally, like, it was the weirdest experience. Yeah, because I'm, you know, I'm usually, like, happy and, you know, I have a great time or whatever. And you walk in and it was, like, almost like you walk in and they're in, a, they're in an airplane hangar that's freaking massive. But when somebody comes in, they're not used to anybody being there. So it's almost like the record player, like, and everybody just focuses on you. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> and so it was, who was there? It was uh, Joe Walsh. He was there. It was the, the uh, Stuart Smith, I think, is the other okay. guitar player. And who? Uh, the bass player was there, okay. and Glenn Fry was still oh. alive, and he was there, and it was like just like you. I mean, it's just like whoa, like they, he was like it was. It did not look fun. Wow. Yeah, it was a trip, and they were they were like all very. And Joe Walsh is a freaking sweetheart. He was so nice, but like the other people he were seems like very he would be. <laughs> yeah, he seems like he'd be the chillest guy in any room. Bro, it, life, he's so life's good. been good to him so far. It has been so far. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, we dropped at I, Amps to one of his rehearsals once too, and that man Joe Walsh. That's yeah, I, for sure, and that's why I'm saying that. Like it, you you, you forget how, just how good these guys are, you know. Like, mm-hmm. and, and when you go to a concert or anything, you know, I've been fortunate to to see stuff, but like, you know, go to a concert and you you'll see, and yeah, and it's just like. Wow, these guys are so, so good. Sure. Like, what's yeah. his name from Foreigner, too? Oh, name? all those guys. Um, now, John, was that Go it ahead. for your list? No. Nope. Yeah, no. So um, we already talked a couple about a couple of those. We talked about Billy Corgan. He's right up there on my list as far mm-hmm. as overall influence. And then um, uh, Angus from ACDC. We talked oh, about him dude. as well. And then my last one on the list, if you're not growing up probably in the late 80s or 90s, you might completely miss him. But in the da- in the, in the band Danzig, uh, John Christ with the guitar. <laughs> oh, dude, that guy was, was awesome. Uh, he was. He didn't have as long a career as some of the other yeah. people were talking about, but you know, really distinct sound. Of course, a lot of that was the Rick Rubin mixing and you know, the yeah. kind of sound design there. But yeah, and so it's anyways, funny. So, I think he was a huge uh, Ted Nugent fan too. So it's like oh dark kind of yeah, Nugent kind of rock, you know. Great white buffalo. Oh, dude, he's a great guitar player too. Man. All right, Brett. Is that man. is that it for you, John? Yeah, it's good. All yeah, right, yeah. the legend himself, Brett Papa. <laughs> your top five. Um, I would say. And this is in no particular order, but A. Hendrix was yeah. like, you know, when you consider all the, the the things that when he came out and what he did and mm-hmm. um, the kinds of songs he wrote and the huge amps and the fuzz and like all the creative trippy albums and phalanging and all the stuff they did, there was nothing like that, you know, at all. And so, you know, I mean, Cream or whatever and, those, and that kind of stuff, but like, he was pushing the boundary like yeah. nobody, you know, and, and all at the same time had that other really cool uh, R&B influence to his playing. And so you got this really diverse mix of music, you know, it was, he's amazing. Um, both rhythm, lead, songwriting. That's a, there's very few people that, that do everything. Mm. You know, it's like, you're right, you're a great rhythm guitar player. You're a great 
lead guitar mm-hmm. player and you mm-hmm. write amazing mm-hmm. songs and lyrics, you know, usually it's a team. Yeah. And so I would say he has to be probably, you know, at the pinnacle of the heap for, he's you the, know, as king, far as guitar huh? players go, right? Yeah. Um, for rock, because this is a rock list. Well, yeah, I mean. Just because we didn't state that at the beginning. Well, you, you know, it's interesting though, is he, like, you, you hear his influence and in, in what jazz Everything. people, yeah, I mean, like, he influenced I mean, all those people, Miles even Davis, like all that stuff. heavy metal rock with Eddie, Eddie Van Halen bringing yeah. the, the finger tapping back and all that stuff. Is that, num- is that the next one on your list? Oh, I, I just course. spoil it. Van Halen's, <laughs> sorry, my shoes all jacked up. Um, uh, yeah, that, that was the pivotal moment for me when I wanted to play guitar, when I heard mm-hmm. Eruption. And, and we, we moved to Southern California right around the time um, the 1984 album came out. Oh, and so, you know, being a kid, you see him on MTV doing Jump and Panama, and it's just like, what is that life? And I want that life. You know, I mean, they were just, and he was, so, they looked like they were having fun all the time, you know? Dude. Those and, pictures uh, on those albums are classic. They're classic, and his Every playing. Album. You know, if you're if you're a guitar fan out there, go and you know on YouTube and search "isolated Van Halen guitar tracks," and you realize how staggeringly good he. Had. I mean, you know, everybody knows. Yeah, Eddie Van Halen rips, but like when you hear it and it's just him by himself in the studio, you're just like, my God, this guy was 21 years old just ripping the face off of people I mean, he was, and the energy you know what I mean like and, and, and he and his brother and how they pushed and pulled oh, yeah. and like mm-hmm. you know the, and, and Anthony again, Davis too the bass player yeah Michael Anthony uh, Michael like, Anthony yeah. get, Anthony Davis <laughs> <laughs> he's a jazz player um, but like you realize again a band that plays all at once right mm. in a room together and that's how they record the album and that's crazy right you think of those songs which would bring me to my energy. next, yeah. my next guitar player would be Neil Sean and Journey, and oh, yeah. you know whether you like Journey or not, Neil Sean is for sure one of the greatest blues rock guitar players of all time. Like so just incredible. ridiculously talented. I mean, you think he played Woodstock when he was 14 years old oh, in Santana's wow. band? You know, it's like come on, right? But uh, Santana, again, oh, there's another one we didn't bring up there. Again, but like the the band is good. You know, the songs are great. It just happens to have really good guitar playing, you know? Yeah. Uh, David Gilmore, Pink Floyd. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, just By the way, he's done some awesome covers on a lot of these songs. <laughs> it's like, fun, man. Like, he's that so stuff. He's so good at picking up Pink Floyd. He's so good at picking up uh, Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy Hendrix. Well, it's fun, man. You get so to tweak out on, like, oh, wow, goodness. man. That really... You know what rocked my world is when I, I got this thing. There's a... a, a device called Art, uh, what's it, Ultimate Slowdowner. I oh think. yeah, where it slows down the And song. yeah, and you can put the CDs in it and, and listen to it, but when you slow it down, you, you realize how nuanced the, the parts were. Mm. You know, I mean, you hear all the little inflections that, and then you can, you can, you can pull the frequencies mm-hmm. so you can hear the guitar more. That's and you so realize, cool. you know, sometimes you, you think, oh, they're doing this. And then you realize once you pull the guitar away from the bass, it's like, oh no, the bass is playing that, that low part, you know, and the guitar is doing something different. So it's, it's really, um, it gives you a really much more respect, you know yeah. what I mean? When you, when you can hear all that stuff, um, through, you know, software like that or whatever. I used to, when I was learning, I had a record. Yeah. I used to, Dude, totally. I used to go back and try to find the note on the guitar because <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I never took lessons yeah. or anything. I'd be like, what the heck is that note? Oh, <laughs> I was to match the note. Yeah. <laughs> I probably messed up so many records that I got from Goodwill, but I would just like look for that stuff over and over again. All right, sorry, go go on. No, no, it was funny <laughs> you said. I remember when I was just I was trying to figure out a Brad Paisley song, and it was like just finally when the CDs could loop in a spot, oh. and I was like, Mike, it's still back then. It's so freaking hard because you got to listen to like. You know, 15 seconds of this just insane, like, country ripping. And it's like, what is he doing? But then you, the, when, now that they slow down and they're in pitch, because they, they used to be when they slowed down, the pitch would change, right? Yeah. And so you'd have to figure out, you know, and then modify it. But um, So Neil Sean, Hendrix, Van Halen. Uh, and young, up-and-coming guitars, maybe, or something like I that? I would agree with you. Jimmy Page, I mean... Yeah. Just incredible mm-hmm. writer. And he, he would be, he and Clapton and, and the, you know, maybe Beck and those guys would kind of all be on that same tier, right? Yeah, Because um, yeah. they're all like extraordinary players. One of my uh, players I really like that's recent is John Mayer. He's another kind of, you know, I'm not going to say he's Jimi Hendrix, but it's very similar to that. Same I just thing saw him with Ali. At he's concert. ridiculous. I never really listened to John yeah. Mayer. No. I was like, this guy shreds Oh my God, he's show. so like, freaking what good. The? 
Well, and, and the great thing about him is he's equally adept at acoustic, and he's really good finger on Finger picking, yeah. too. Oh, my gosh. Finger picking, shredding, solos. I was just like, yeah. dude, this no, guy he's no freaking joke. rock, And man. his band is freaking ridiculous. The guy, he has this guy, Aaron Sterling, on drums, and he's like a uh-huh. um, session guy. Mm-hmm. And talk about, if you guys all want to be entertained, his name's mm-hmm. Aaron Sterling, and I think it's Steroid or... Look up Aaron Sterling on Instagram. He has one of the best Instagrams you'll ever follow in your life. Because he's like a, ge- a genius. Like his, his, the things he'll just say randomly, like he'll go on a Star Wars rant. And it's oh. like two minutes of like, how on earth? This like just streaming consciousness, oh right? But then he'll go and he'll take apart songs and he'll speed them up and then add like really trippy drum groups. So it's like a really creative, cool yeah. channel, you know? Um, so anyways, John Mayer, again... Writes lyrics, writes the music, plays equally good at rhythm and uh, and lead. So to me, he's he's definitely man. What a list! Of, yeah, one Gosh. of the guys. I, I, I can and stop then, there. But like the, um, one thing I was introduced to you by, which I found very fascinating, was session guitars. Oh, I really man. never like I knew like Neil Peart was like a session drummer and stuff yeah. like that. But like in my head, I always thought you know I I never really thought of session guitars. And then I, when mm-hmm. I heard your friend Tim Pierce play, I was like. I think he's the greatest guitarist in the world. Like, I would just hear him play. Like, talk about perfection. Yeah. Like, perfection. <laughs> like, it's just amazing. It's freaking crazy. So I, I was hoping I would get some of his magic when I shook his hand when I met him. The first <laughs> I know. Well, I think we all <laughs> I are. I think all are. I was like, no. Like, my fingers are <laughs> stealing his pick. Maybe his pick will do it. Um, no. You know, they they don't get the credit they deserve, but I, I really feel, and I've, I, been with a lot of them now right and so that's kind of one of the things that i do is i film session guitar players and and then they'll break down um how they do what they do on an album right Mm -hmm. but what you don't most people don't realize is somebody's walking in the room with a piece of paper with chords on it and maybe they heard a very basic idea of what the track is going to be right maybe it's you know maybe some other band cut a demo but it's very you know kind of normal and these guys within two takes play something that you hear on the radio and like, like they're not fixing stuff it's like these guys are in a room never played anything like this before and they just come up with parts on the fly and and not only that but the whole band so you know in nashville there'll be sometimes there'll be three guitar players right so you have maybe a guy that can do the lead uh-huh. and, and maybe is like doing like the parts, like the cool parts. And there's another guy rocking down rhythm and there's an acoustic guitar player. Mm. So not only do they have to come up with a great part, but all three of them have to listen to each other and play off mm-hmm. each other. Right. Mm-hmm. And the whole band does that. Right. And so as I started seeing this with my own eyes, it's like, this is the greatest level of, of improvising I've ever seen because that's all it is. It's complete parts being improvised. So you think back and you know, go back to like the Wrecking Crew, which is another um, uh, famous session group. There's a there's a movie on it, but like Beach Boys and some oh, of these man. iconic songs. It's like that's their take. That's their first take on that song. The band, the whole wow, orchestra wow. playing together. It's like they're all just playing together in a room, and that's what you hear. You know, and it's just like so. Listening man. to those guys, it's it's really, it's really a whole new. Yeah, and so I think that's my next frontier. I think I'm going to start filming. Like the whole groups, Dude, those guys doing that. Guys, follow Brett yeah. if you are it's, interested in music, guitars, yeah. anything like that. Follow Brett Papa <laughs> right now. Stop what <laughs> you're doing. Actually, like this video. Yeah, we're <laughs> follow yeah, and subscribe. Click it's so it's selfish, selfish. Yeah. jeez. Yeah. Please, <laughs> or if you already know Brett, comment down below how awesome Brett is yeah, and how much you like him. And for our other links, if you're interested in our podcast and our other videos we did with Brett. You can find everything at azart.space. Thanks for having me, you guys. It was awesome. Thank you guys. Awesome. Super fun. What, a, what an amazing list yes. of rock guitars. Dude, like, go and celebrate. Look I mean, up all the albums and, we and probably, go. Like, go forth. We probably talked about a fraction oh, dude. of them. Because like, like, right now I'm starting course. to think of other bands and yeah. other guitars. So I'm like, oh, I feel terrible I didn't yeah. mention these. I said. See you next time. Yeah. <laughs>